Thank you for joining us um, on building a culture of math learning professional learning series. This is a partnership between the Kentucky Department of Education and Leading Educators. I'm Erin Chavez. I'm an academic program consultant with the Kentucky Department of Education, the Office of Teaching and Learning and the Division of Program Standards. And with me is my great colleague Maggie Doyle. She's also an academic program consultant in the Office of Teaching and Learning with the Division of Program Standards. Today, our essential questions are, what is a culture of math learning and why is it so important right now? What does the Building a Culture of Math Learning Professional Learning Series offer? Where can educators access the Building a Culture of Math Learning resources? And how can educators get additional support with planning instruction um, engaging into the standards for mathematical practice? So one of the reasons that we're so excited to share this with you is because that right now in our essential question is really any time. So we are facing unique challenges, but we also have unique opportunities. And regardless of what time we're planning our instruction for, our culture of math learning should always be there. So we feel like it's very timely and will be um, for a long time from now. So um, effective teaching of mathematics, um, that that classroom culture has to be there. So that culture allows students to take risks, to, to have them persevere when they um, face challenging content or they face a problem and they're not sure how to start or um, they're really grappling with new information. Um, we want our students to utilize tools and model with mathematics and really use um, their critical thinking as they approach new problems. And we also want students to be able to share their own thinking and to offer feedback on the thinking of others. And that's a really powerful tool that is going to um, extend well beyond the walls or virtual walls of any sort of math classroom. Because if our students can share their thinking and offer feedback on the thinking of others, that is going to be really powerful for them um, in every facet of their life. From the teaching perspective, and there are some things that we can do to cultivate that culture. So we can um, model how to grapple with that content, how to build that deep understanding. We can equip students with um, the knowledge and tools that they need to find um, pathways to a given solution and, and not to be satisfied with one strategy. Maybe there are more. Maybe um, we want them to reason through someone else's strategy. And we want to facilitate regular opportunities for students to engage in the mathematical practices, which is really what this professional learning series is about supporting. It's all about engaging students in the mathematical practices because we feel like if students can analyze their own misconceptions and they can refine their own thinking, that having that culture in our math classrooms is really going to support um, students and engaging in those mathematical practices is so important. So speaking of that, Max, that is um, exactly why the writers of the standards wanted to elevate the standards for mathematical practice. Um, you know, they're, it, they're equivalent to the standards for mathematical content. And so um, in the standards document, you'll notice the attending to SMPs, um, and that's just to really show and highlight how the standards for mathematical practice help students engage into the mathematical content. Um, and so it's really allowing um, our students be, to become better practitioners of mathematics um, and grow um, mathematical maturity as they experience the content standards um, throughout their elementary, middle, and high school years. Um, we also know that um, that each standard is either um, a conceptual understanding, procedural skill, and fluency, or an application problem. And, and with those standards, um, they have to have the mathematical practices to engage into that content. And so um, it's this is just a perfect learning series on um, to elevate the standards for mathematical practice. So I'm sure that right now you're thinking, yeah, that's the type of culture that we want in our math classrooms. Those are the kind of experiences we want all of our students to have. Um, opportunity and access to. And so to support that, the Building a Culture of Math Learning Professional Learning Series um, is really built into a 12-week content cycle. Okay, And we know that that might seem like 
um, seem like a lot, but it's really split into some manageable chunks and is really built to work into the instructional priorities that your school or district is already um, really working on. So you'll notice in that first column next to the little um, orange star says the introduction to the standards for mathematical practice. So that's our first topic. And within that topic, there are three different weeks of instruction. And so with each of the four topics, we start with the general introduction. We go to focus on and really emphasizing SMP1, making sense of problems and persevering in them, what we all wish our students could do. Um, SMP4, modeling with mathematics, and then SMP, constructing viable arguments and critiquing the reasoning of others. So we really have a focus on those four topics but we focus on them for three weeks at a time. So one of the reasons that that's so powerful is the structure of those weeks. So week one is all about shared learning. This is where you work in your PLCs or you work with your teams and you really dig deeply into making sure that everyone has a consistent understanding and vision for what um, elevating those mathematical practices might look like in the classroom. And that could look a lot of different ways. So you might watch um, some teacher videos. You might um, discuss an article or or do some group practice. There are some different strategies embedded in the in the learning series. So it could look a lot of different ways, but you're learning together, which is really powerful. Week two is all about planning and practice. So as teachers, we know and we develop a level of comfort after we deliver instructions a couple times. We're able to refine a lesson, different things like that. So this is really an opportunity to do that outside of the classroom in a safe space with your colleagues who only want what's best for you. Um, and you get the chance to analyze your units or your lesson and maybe to practice implementing something new. And especially where um, you might be delivering instruction in different platforms. That can be a really powerful practice as we go throughout the year to to just build your own skill set and to grow um, professionally as you try new things. And then week three is our student progress monitoring. So that's where you look at the results of all that work that you did. So as we try this in class, what happened? Um, do we see any trends in our student data? Um, and you really can go back and reflect on what you just learned to again grow as we move forward. So each topic has each of those three weeks. And if you're not sold already, I've got three great reasons for you why this professional learning series is for you. One, it's content focused, which um, as a teacher, I always appreciate it. I always appreciated when I could apply things directly to um, my mathematics instruction. And it's going to align to the instructional priorities of your school. So because this focuses on the standards for mathematical practice, which are from the Kentucky Academic Standards for Mathematics, um, everything is going to streamline directly into what you've already been working on. And because we're focusing on engaging students in the practices, it doesn't matter what program or curriculum you're using because these practices should be universal. And this is going to offer teachers the opportunity to examine your instructional materials and tasks and then look at the standards document and the supporting resources to make sure everything fits together really well. Two, it's student and teacher centered. So they're available by grade band, which we felt like was really important because um, sometimes it is really helpful to see things modeled and to, to think about how they would apply directly to the group that we're working with. And this gives teachers the opportunities to consider the implications in their classroom to their planning and practice. So it really helps them internalize the learning and the planning and the progress monitoring. And three, instructionally relevant and actionable. So. As a classroom teacher, my favorite professional learning series were always the ones where I knew that I learned something that day that would impact my instruction the next day. And so these um, offer that lesson study, that practice and content delivery, so I get the chance to practice my lesson and then go deliver it the next day, or even some questioning strategies or ways to, element, um, to elevate the practices that can influence my classroom instruction immediately. So those are three big pluses to this professional learning series.
so Mags, you might be thinking, where can I find this amazing resource? So you can find um, the module Building a Culture of Math Learning Resources under kystandards.org. Um, kystandards.org is where we release all of our um, resources, and if you have not already subscribed, please do so. Um, that's in the uh, top left-hand corner under the plus sign, um, and we don't bombard with lots of emails. It's typically one email per week, but it just keeps you up to date on um, all contents actually that are releasing um, new resources. So when you get into when you get onto kystandards.org, then you're going to want to click on mathematics um, standards resources, and then you'll look for the icon that says mathematics professional learning modules. And so once you do that, um, here's what you'll find. You'll find a facilitator's guide, a PowerPoint, participant handouts, and any links to any of the resources to support educators um, when you're designing, designing instruction to align with CAS for mathematics. Um, this content cycle is super important for educators. Um, its purpose you know, is to help educators plan and design instruction to provide students with opportunities to engage in the standards for mathematical practices as well as the content standards. Um, you know, just like we've talked about before, um, the mathematical practices are held accountable just as much as the content standards, and um, we just thought that this would be a great series to release um, as you are engaging students into the mathematics, whether it be virtual or face to face. That's all right, Erin. I think that um, it has something for everyone. And so there are strategies in there and there's some um, reflections. Um, it has teachers thinking about equity and how that's offered through teacher um, through st to students through their instruction. And so it's really um, it's really packed with a lot of quality material. But one of my favorite things is that it does slow down and kind of pace them. So you're not um, learning so much without the chance to breathe and practice and then reflect in between. So I really like that. If you get to the end of the 12 week content cycle and your teachers are like, you know, we want more <laughs> like where can we get some more? Um, we just wanted to remind you that in Section C of the Getting to Know the Kentucky Academic Standards for Mathematics module that focuses also on the standards for mathematical practice. There are two discovery tasks with that. There's um, one that has teachers digging into the SMPs for the in the CAS for Mathematics. There is a sample task matchup and again just powering these discussions um, in this setting where it's a safe space to learn and grow as professionals together. Um, and there are some optional extensions, there are reflections, and one of the biggest, um, most impactful tools that we've kind of gotten feedback on through the modules is the engaging the SMPs, look fors and question stems document. So that's on KY standards as well. Um, it's in that section of the module, but it's super powerful um, for classroom instruction. So if I decide that within my instruction, I want to really elevate math practice number two, there's a page for that. So it's essentially a really um, convenient and easy to use one pager for each mathematical practice. So what what are students doing? What are teachers doing? What can I ask if I really want to um, really want to elevate this practice in my instruction today? Yeah, Eva, Max, I'm thinking about when I am I'm getting ready to design or implement a task. And it's um, clearly focused to the target of the standard. It's it's a really good conceptual understanding problem. But what if I don't have um, those um, the mathematical practices? You know, I feel like this is a really good tool where I could say, OK, I really need to get in SMP3. So let me um, engage some questions through that way. Or what if I need to look at um mp2 um so here's some questions i just think it's um super powerful and very grateful that you um put that together yeah 
And that um, that tool is linked multiple times in this professional learning series. So as teachers are learning and they're doing the shared learning and they're doing the planning and practice and they're doing the progress monitoring, this document is in there and they can dig through it and it can um, really impact our mathematics instruction. So before you go, we have five things to know. So as Erin mentioned earlier, visit and subscribe to kystandards.org for up-to-date information on available resources. And as we mentioned earlier, we really want this to be manageable for schools and districts. And please feel free to be flexible because these come in kind of those four main topics. Um, you really can take a lot of liberties with what works within the professional learning um, arc that you already have for your school or district. So in September, our first three sessions, that first topic, um, and then the three weekly sessions um, is dropping. In October, that second topic will drop with all three sections. November, same thing, and December. So we really wanted to release this um in in pieces that would really allow um teachers to to learn to plan to practice and then reflect before they proceed to learning planning and practice so we really wanted it to um really be given the time to pack as big a punch as it can with regard to professional practice so um so those will be those releases and then we also have a fall professional learning series um, coming up on comprehensive balance systems of assessment and the first release of those is going to be on September 16th. So um, we really are proud of this partnership between KDE and leading educators and we really think um, that it can be really powerful if it's used in schools and districts. So we'd love to hear your feedback and um, we wish you well and hope that hope that you have the opportunity to learn and grow together. Thanks. Have a great day.